Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck. And as some of you may know, there has been a recent banned announcement regarding Standard and Historic. Agent of Treachery and Fires of Invention are banned in Standard and suspended in Historic, meaning you can play them and then they reserve the right to ban them in the future or unsuspend them. And then the companion mechanic also got changed, where you now need to pay 3 mana at sorcery speed to put the companion from the sideboard into your hand, and then you can cast it normally. So pretty big nerf to the companion mechanic. The changes aren't live yet on Arena, I think they will happen on the 4th. But I built this deck with a card that didn't get suspended in Historic, strangely enough, and that is a Winota, Joiner of Forces, the 4 mana, Legendary Human Warrior as a 4-4 and says whenever a non-human creature we control attacks, look at the top 6 cards of our library, we can put a human creature card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attacking, gains indestructible until end of turn and the rest goes on the bottom in a random order. Now in standard we know it to try to cheat Agent of Treachery in play which is now banned or will be banned. But in Historic, the card we usually want to put in play with Winota is Angras Marauders, the 7 mana for, for a human pirate that says if a source we control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to a permanent or player instead. Now this isn't a stock version of the Winota deck, which typically plays Adanto Vanguard and Bonecrusher Giant, but instead, since we will see a change to the companion mechanic and Umori being less of an incentive to build around, I wanted to try a version playing a few legendary creatures plus Mox Amber as a way to potentially help us accelerate into Winota. And so we've got a total of around 10 cheap legendary creatures to enable the Mox Amber, including three copies of Arisa Redeemed, which can also start spawning Elf Warrior creature tokens, which are more non-humans for Winota. Then we've got three copies of Amara, Soul of the Accord, as a 2 mana 2-2 two, two Elf Cleric, and whenever she becomes stabbed we get to make a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with a lifelink, and despite looking like a human, it's another non-human token to enable Winota. We've got two copies of Galia of the Endless Dance as a 2 mana 2-2 two, two Seder with haste, and whenever we attack with three or more creatures we can discard a card at random, and if we do draw two cards, so that can also come up, and haste creatures in general are good in a Winota deck, since we can potentially play them and then enable Winota that's already in play if the opponent somehow didn't die already. And then we also have two copies of Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. This is a human, so it's not going to enable Winota, but it's just a very powerful card in a mostly creatures deck. And of course we can play Mox Amber before we play Thalia, so we don't have to pay the one extra mana for each non-creature spell. And a 2-1 first strike is still a pretty decent body. And then we can hit Thalia with the Winota trigger, so we have a few more humans to potentially hit. And then the rest of the deck is pretty straightforward. We've got the turn 1 Lunar Elves as another non-human to accelerate into Winota. We've got Fauna Shaman as a key part of the deck, as a 2 mana 2-2 two, two Elf Shaman, that for 1 green can tap, discard a creature card to search our library for a creature, reveal it and put it into our hand, so we can discard expensive cards like Angrath's Marauders or Hactos, and search up our Winota to make sure we have her on turn 4. And then we've got the full playset of Legion Warboss, which can spawn hasty goblin tokens, and can also potentially help us go wide and enable Winota multiple times. And then finally Hactos is the Unscarred as a 4 mana 6 one, a legendary human warrior. And when Hactos enters the battlefield we choose a number between 2, 3 and 4 at random. And then Hactos has protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number. And then has to attack each combat if able, so not a very powerful creature to potentially hit with Winota. And then our four copies of Angras Marauders. Is this version better than the stock version with Adanto Vanguards and Bonecrusher Giants? Maybe not, but at least we're trying something a little bit different. And then taking a look at our mana base, we're also playing the full playset of Ancient Ziggurat in a mostly creature deck. Now, Ancient Ziggurat doesn't let us activate abilities of creatures, so we can't use it to activate Riss or to activate Fauna Shaman, so we still need additional green mana to use the Shaman but it's still a nice land that comes into play untapped and doesn't cost us any life. And then we've got 12 shock lands with 4 temple garden, 4 sacred foundry, 4 stomping ground, and a couple check lands that come into play untapped if we control one of those shock lands, 2 sun petal grove, 2 clift up retreat, and 2 rootbound crag, and then 1 basic planes just in case the opponent wants to field their Varun or ghost quarter us. And then we're playing planes instead of forest, just because basic forest is pretty awkward with Hactos in the deck. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does.
All right, we're on the draw. This is pretty much the ideal hand. Turn one elf, turn two warboss, turn three Winota. We're on the draw, so maybe our opponent still has a chance. Especially if they have some cheap removal. The fact that we're not playing Umorius Companion also maybe disguises the fact that we're a Winota deck a little bit better. Opponent on Vampires. Mox Amber, not too useful right now, but that's fine. Opponent trades, which is a smart move when they expect to be facing a Winota deck. Can they kill the war boss? If they can't, they're in trouble. Or maybe they have instant speed removal for Winota, like a Mortify. It's gonna be Mavrin. I'm afraid that's not gonna do it here. And our point explodes as they see Winota. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Gigantha deck. This hand's not great. Don't think my opponent's gonna be too heavy on the non-creature spells for Thalia to be amazing. Alright, this is much better. Probably don't need both Fauna Shamans. Could also make a case for bottoming Thalia, but just in case they are still playing a lot of non-creatures, I could see Thalia being useful. And then we can play turn to Amara, hope to attack with it. Dryads, alright, nice. Opponent on the Experimental Frenzy deck. So... I could play Amara into... Fauna Shaman or Galia and then play if Winota with two triggers on the following turn. Or I could play Thalia to maybe slow down Experimental Frenzy or... Escape to the Wilds, which is maybe better for now. Looks like maybe a Devil's Play. Sure. So this turn, probably play Fauna Shaman, have it killed by the Devil's Play once again, and then keep Amara and Galia for later. Keeping the Haste creature to follow up we know it is also typically better. It's gonna be another Dryad instead. So I could get one Winota trigger here if I wanted to, or I could just wait it out and play two more non-humans this turn. Which is maybe the preferred play. I think I just double two drop here. And then next turn get three triggers, which is hopefully enough. And there's a Frenzy. And an Outcast, okay. It's a dangerous attack. Marauders. That's a miss, and that's a miss, alright. Not the best hit, but we still got more orders for free. My Galia trigger also gave me a bunch of lands, so we got pretty unlucky, all things considered. Only got seven mana. Point falls to eight. And I guess we'll play a land. So they need to Devil's Play to kill 
Marauders or Winota pretty much. So four mana left over. Just gonna try and find as many chum blockers as possible. So now we are hoping for Hactos with two or four as a random number. And the opponent has to scoop it up. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We do have a turn three Hactos, which can be decent in some matchups, although no Winota in sight. Probably take a mulligan. All right, this is much better. Bottom of Hactos. And a turn one Stone Cold Serpent, so maybe some sort of artifact deck. Uh, I guess we can play Lanner Elves on turn one, but we can play Riss. And it's nice to have an extra one drop, so if we don't have the Elves, we still get to add a non-human to the board. Turn two Steel Overseer. And then we'll play the Elves. Don't think my opponent's trading for Steel Overseer. Alright, they've got the Voltaic Servant plus Steel Overseer combo, which is pretty strong. Drawing Angras Marauders is not according to plan, so I can get one Winota trigger here. I guess that's good enough for now. And we hit Angras Marauders. Indestructible, opponent takes it, falls to 9. They could have blocked uh, Rista Redeemed, not sure why they didn't. Skilled Animator. Alright, that's gonna hurt. But I can take 13 here. And then, yeah, we'll just attack with everyone. See what happens. Get Hactos. And that's a miss. So they can block Hactos, which is 12 damage by itself. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a very explosive hand, including... Risk Alley and Mox Amber for the Winota. We'll keep Mox Amber hidden for now. And another Gigantha deck might mean another Frenzy deck. Alright, I guess we'll uh, Gallia here. Wayward Surtooth. And Elves. That's a miss. And that's a Hactos. Hit two, which is a pretty good number against the Frenzy deck. So if we know it survives, we can try again next turn. Double outcasts. All right, let's get in there. Oh no, we drew all the Marauders. That's unlucky. But there was still one left. 
And yeah, Hactos is going to be dealing 12 damage here, so that should be game. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, pretty decent hands. Turn 1 Elf, turn 2 we can War Boss, or we can play Fauna Shaman to set up our uh, Winota. Sound Breeding Pool. So if I Fauna Shaman this turn, next turn I can activate and play War Boss. Yeah, it's probably the play here. Wild Growth Walker. So they will be able to block my token. It's going to be a thrashing Brontodon. Alright, so we get to search up Winota. And get four triggers. Go to Hactos and the Marauders. Hactos hit two, so they can chump it with a Wild Growth Walker. But our opponent explodes instead. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Pretty decent hands. Thalia, not a non human for Winota purposes, but does enable the Mox Amber. Facing a turn one grazer. So, probably the Experimental Frenzy deck. I guess I'll take a turn to Legion War Boss instead. And there's Gigantha. And there's Winota. And there's an explosion. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, this sounds good. Clifftop Retreat will come into play tapped, but with so many Lanner Elves it doesn't really matter. And then... Uh, We'll go Riss plus Elves. And next turn we can play Winota already. Emery, so this is probably a Cathas combo deck. Warboss is nice too, but we'll just play Winota. Get our Marauders. And that's game. 
So I could keep doing this all day, but it's honestly getting pretty repetitive and I'm not taking any pleasure in these wins. So hopefully somehow we can still get Winota to appear in the suspended list for Historic. At least that's my hope with this video. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.